Hi, welcome to Figure Drawing for Popular Media. We'll go over a few different art strategies and uh, we'll begin with gesture drawings. And usually you can take a couple of seconds to probably no more than a minute to, to uh, lay out a foundation for gesture drawing. So we'll get started with that now. All right, so um, usually when you do a vertical line, it's like a person standing or a building and a horizontal line, like the ground or a bed. And with the diagonal line, you can get more of a kind of an action uh, thing happening with it. So here we have one. And adding a little bit to a limb, making this a leg. All right, that took just a couple of seconds. So I'll do one to the right of it, which um, I'll change the brush size a little bit, the opacity. I'll raise it up a tiny bit, okay? So now we're on the right side and more of a T, we're thinking of a T shape um, gesture. And also with the gesture line, you might want to look for what's called a shadow core. That's like a heavier shadow that seems to uh, permeate throughout the figure and kind of gives you direction. So. I'll make the, the brush a little bit bigger. All right, so we have something like that. Um, next, I'll do um, a pose and um, an action, kind of an action pose, and then we'll start um, doing a little bit longer minute minute trines. Okay, we'll do this one on the left side, and I'm just going to start. Um, let see, not sure, maybe make that brush a little bit smaller. Okay, that's good enough for the gesture. Now I will start kind of adding to it a little bit. Uh, if you want, you can make a different layer and, and make this one lighter and work over that, or you can work over the actual drawing. So in this case, I'll work on this actual gesture drawing and I'll add to it.
I'm starting to add some of the digits to the hand. We already have a foot down here and maybe um, some digits for the other hand over here. All right, so I'll leave that one there. To me, it's still somewhat in a gesture uh, mode style, and we'll do a new one, okay? Okay, so here I'll start with one that will um, start with the gesture and then we'll add to it and make it more of a, a slightly more finished drawing. So that's a real gesture drawing. It's just a couple seconds long and we'll elaborate and we'll add more to it um, as, as we go with this one. So, okay, on this one, I'll make it in two layers. This first layer will make it uh, the opacity a lot lighter. We'll add another layer to it. And then we'll work, we'll work on that second one. Okay, so let's get started with that. And then we can also zoom into it. I'm zooming in to add a few more uh, details to it. Now, traditionally, I draw with uh, paper, pencil, and watercolors. But for this demonstration, I'm using uh, the digital platform. And when doing character design, you want to consider the figure. Later, as you have time, you want to consider the background, the settings. So we'll add a little bit of that. I can make it um, maybe the inside of a spaceship, some cavern or a building. We can decide that in a little bit as I'm still working on, on the figure itself. Adding a few details, such as the, um, the bell, some of the uh, markings on the fabric, on the, the clothing. Then I'll go back and um, see, we'll go back and then add some more detail to it.
Now we can add some more value. Value is um, from light to dark, and you could think of it as white of a paper and dark with the sky and in between there. If it helps you to strategize doing the, the gray values, you can think of it as white and black, and then at least three different grays, like medium gray, light gray, and dark gray. I'll start with the light and um, do a little bit bigger brush and lighten the, the opacity to it. Oops, that's too much, so. That's still um, quite a bit there, so make it a little bit smaller. Now I can start act adding more of the background. So I'm going to maybe make it like the interior of a, of a, a big spaceship, uh, mothership. I'm doing some casual um, perspective lines here on the bottom and I can go back and refine those later on. And then I'm gonna do the upper uh, sides of the wall. Okay. So All right, now I'm going to go into some detail of the background. Make that pen size smaller, make it a little bit darker. These are my guidelines back here for perspective. These are here. And um, see, there's an imaginary vanishing point somewhere a little bit above her kneecap. And I'm using these diagonal lines, guidelines to help me to go towards that, um, to that vanishing point. So again, this is just a demonstration figure, but I can think maybe it's um, some space cadet, uh, colonel, who's out there going out on a mission or something. There's an emergency on some planet or some moon or whatnot. And so maybe over here you could, on the left side, you could add a, a small ship or you can keep adding some hangars. So I'm adding a, it's kind of a hangar back here. to the upper, uh, the middle of the right side. And maybe some kind of um, maintenance flying type of machine gadget. And then the illusion of a, of a ship going out towards that same vanishing point, so. Right, then you can just keep adding, keep adding detail. Now that I have the general direction of that vanishing point, and
trying to see if you can see my hand um, drawing it. So sometimes that helps out when you can see the, 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 the hands other than just seeing the lines appearing on the screen. So we'll try it a little bit like this and see what happens. A little bit of awkward position of drawing kind of tilted, but uh, hopefully you can see some of that. Um, next, we'll cover some um, uh, some general anatomy um, ideas and tips. Okay. We'll save that gallery picture and we'll start another one with some ideas for, for anatomy. All right. Um, and, and some of you want to start out with the skeletal structure. We have one here. This is the torso, the pelvic area. And usually um, on the fifth rib on the top, it's where the, where the chest would end, the pectoralis for both men and women. And the upper leg is here, the patella, the kneecap, the bottom bones. The bigger uh, bottom bone is known as the tibia and means um, like lukewarm water in Spanish comes from Latin. And then the, the thinner outer um, bone of the lower bottom leg is the fibula. You could, uh, fibula, like FIB, so you could think of it as the, a fibbing bone and so it gets a smaller bone there, the little smaller one. And we'll do the same thing here with the tibia and the, fib the fibula. Now at the upper thigh, the fratorius goes all the way from the pelvic area to the side of the, of the kneecap. Um, if this is a female figure, uh, stereotypically the, the pelvic bone is bigger and the torso is smaller. And for a man, uh, stereotypically it's reversed. It's uh, usually a, a wider, bigger, a torso and and a smaller pelvic area. Right up here, we have the clavicle, the shoulders. The shoulder would be the deltoid, the deltoid muscles. So the deltoid is up here. You have the neck with the vertebrae and um, the muscles that come down the side of the neck is the sternocleomastoids that right here and they end on top of the sternum and the center of the clavicle. You can use a, an arching line to indicate a turned figure, the nose, the mouth, and just some simple ideas for the hands. Uh, Kevin Nolan has a good trick where he just puts an oval where he indicates where the fingers and the fists will go and then he adds to it later on. All right, so now we'll make this um, a layer. I'm reducing the opacity. And I'm gonna add a second layer, which where I'll try to uh, make the figure a little bit darker and a little bit tighter. So. And we can zoom in on this as well to um, work with some, some more finer detail. Okay. 
Okay, so here we have that head that was arching. And a little bit of tip nose. The jawline. Underneath the mouth, you can think of it as an egg shape. And this is the bottom of the egg shape and it would connect to the jaw. Here's the neck muscles we were talking about. And then the clavicle. Trapezius coming off the side onto the deltoid. And then I'll do the other side. Um, so the shoulders will not always look the same depending on the movement. So like say my fist, my left fist is on the table, but if I had this fist up higher, so they're in a the different placement, different size. The same thing with the, the, the shoulder here. This one's slightly tilted and um, now right here on the, on the, Fist, her her left hand, we can tilt it up and have her hands coming up like this if you want and make a thumb. And then we'll tighten those up later. The latinimus torsi comes up on the side. We'll bring in the ribs. Here's the bottom of the sternum. And then right here below the ribs, we'll have the, the obliques. You know, they're attached from the lower rib cage to the top of the pelvic area. This uh, center part here where I mentioned the bottom of the sternum is known as the thoracic arch. And I've joked before at the presentations, like it sounds like Jurassic Park. And so, so think of it that way, just some kind of mnemonic tools to, um, to memorize and remember um, some anatomy. Now going along with that, the first two um, abdominals on top and so there's like four, on the above the belly button that's kind of a stereotype and then you would have the other two below it and that's another way to think about it it changes depends on the person the top of the pelvic and curve it and then the other part then the other side of the pelvic and then curve it and so we're still building it up we can build it up this way or you, some people build up uh, their figures with cylindrical um, geometric shapes it just depends I'm working on her right arm now, and I'll twist the arm. And we'll add a, a thumb. The pinky usually goes on its own. Usually your fingers go one way, but the pinky, you notice, kind of wants to go its own way. All right, I haven't drawn the hair yet, but that's another part. We go to the other thumb on this side. And make some kind of wrist band or part of the clothing on this side. Um, if again, we're going with the space theme, like some kind of sci-fi theme, we could make a, a an old school helmet. And um, on this one, we could make this one a cavern, like it's somebody that's going inside. Maybe they have some special uh, lamp or light here. All right, so you'll notice these um, cave sections are like on the mid ground, but you could also make um, one on the foreground. It's almost touching the, the window or the screen. And that's um, in, in painting or drawing, you could think of the whole screen as a picture plane, as an as a actual window. And so this part of the cavern is actually very close to that window. The figure, you can see it's maybe about five or six feet away. Okay, so it's just an illusion. There's just lines on paper, but we're trying to make it give it a more um, uh, 3D illusion to it. Okay, so 
making some on the left side. Uh, we can make some background and then we can add to it. We can also add some value to it, but that would be another thing. I would probably work out just a little bit more of the figure there. Okay, now some general um, drawing tips. I, I notice it works uh, well if you keep things down to three, you'll hopefully memorize it. So if, if you take anything from the presentation, uh, maybe it's um, something that will help you. And something that helps you remember might be if you can uh, boil it down to no more than three steps or concept. So one of them is the idea of a line, a line, um, shape, and value. So here's the line, and with the line you can make things Maybe some kind of um, snake thing, or again, starting with the line, you can um, make a knuckle, a fist. Notice that uh, tip that usually the second knuckle here is usually the highest, and then they tend to come down, they tend to go lower. So usually that second knuckle is the highest. Then you have a little thumb sticking out. Forearm. Deltoid again, which is the shoulder, and you have a fist. Um, you can indicate with shadow muscles or changes in the body structure, something like that. See it? So we're just still losing line, line here to create shape, and then to add some value. If it's just linear art you're doing, you can still um, allude to value by making part of it dark like this, or the eye of the snake a little bit, a little bit on the bottom, or a little bit on this side, adding some, some weight to it. The weight, uh, illusion of weight to the snake and some shadow on the bottom where, where it's touching the bottom of the ground a little bit harder. All right, so then with uh, developing character design, you might uh, come across different uh, things like such as profiles. So we'll do three little profiles of, of different type of characters. Um, one of them, we're starting on the left side. Okay, so there's one there. Um, we'll make another one. So profiles could be different ethnicities, different age groups, different generations, and just about anything, any combination you want. All right, then I'll make another um, one from somewhere else. And you could still add stuff, even though it's using imagination, you can add like uh, the, the sternocleomastoid back here from the, from the bottom of the ear to down to the clavicle. And you could add that trapezi coming in, you could add the clavicle, and then it's covered up by the, by the deltoid. And then part of it connects here to the, the center of the clavicle. And you can give it a bicep triceps in the back and um, let's see something else right there so okay so that's that's one way of, of thinking about maybe profiles in a different format 
You can even do it more cartoony. And it still functions in the same way. So if you're doing a cartoony character, you could think about it. How would it look? Um, looking from different directions, um, from behind. Um, in front of you. So things to think about. All right, hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you to the fine folks at San Diego Comic Con and specifically to the folks in programming uh, for inviting me to do this. And thank you for coming to uh, watch the video. Hopefully it has been helpful to you. And thanks again. And see you soon next time in San Diego, hopefully.